Greetings everyone, and welcome to the Mark of History, and to another sword view. Again, this is by Romance of Men and the third sword they've sent me. It is called the Black Dragon. I wonder how it got that name. Anyways, this is a spring steel extra sharp katana. Overall length of this thing, including the say and the handle, is about 40.5 inches. Blade length is about 28.3 inches. The harness is a 55 HRC, which, as I've mentioned in a previous video, could mean anything up to 560 carbon steel all the way down to 1095. Not entirely sure, but not bad overall for a spring steel. And again, blade weight is only about 350 ounces, which ain't bad for what the blade is overall. It is full ting, hand forged, obviously a traditional heat treated as most of the weapons are. And the edge hardness has been done in a traditional manner to increase hardness. And most uniquely on this weapon is also, it includes a double blood groove, which we'll get into a bit later when we talk about the katana itself. Overall, the cost on this blade is $189, and I believe it is on sale right now for $150, $151. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that sale, I'm not sure how long it'll last. But um, if you get it before, then you might be able to get a little bit at a discount. Again, before I proceed any further with this video, it is important, as I do with all my videos, to put a little context into it and tell you that I got this sword at a good, significant discount, and, uh, well, it's free. Um, I put that because it's important for you all to understand where I'm coming from when reviewing these weapons, and if in case there are any biases or anything you feel is a bit unwarranted, that you might know where that's coming from, and uh, while I will try to avoid it, if it is there, that's kind of why. Anyways, let's proceed with the review of the blade from pommel to tip, shall we? So of course, we'll start of course with the Kashiri or the pommel. Now overall, the pommel took a little bit to grow on me, I won't deny it. I wasn't too sure about the silver color overall, and um, again, I'm not quite sure if this is brass or aluminum. My bet would be based on the other swords I've received, probably an aluminum, most likely electroplated with uh, silver paint. But overall though, I actually did come to enjoy it quite a bit. The silver took a minute to grow on me. I'm used to just staying to either black or a bronze color. But silver is an interesting color choice, and um, overall it doesn't look bad. It's got a cool dragon pattern on the butt of it, and overall, it didn't actually feel bad going up and down the hands. No sharp points, nothing weird, nothing jutted out, and uh, it did feel good overall when swinging and using an actual testing. Next, we move on to the suka or the handle. Now, again, unlike the pommel, it took a minute to get used to it. Overall, though... I actually came to really like it. It's got a black wrap with a white ray skin and a silver chromish charm in it, which, again, took a minute to get used to. So overall, the wrap is, again, not a silk, so materials aren't exactly, obviously, the fanciest. You're not paying a lot for it. But the fact is, is that it does feel pretty good in the hands, and unlike previous problems with it, they've mostly solved some of the problems with the sliding in the handle I've heard some people complain about. But this time, um, it seemed to hold up. There are some points where it still moves in the diamond pattern, but it didn't seem to fall apart overall in testing. And uh, the white ray skin, again, it's an interesting choice, and some might call it even a bit campy or cheesy looking. But um, it kind of grew on me overall, and honestly, tonight I do kind of like some of those interesting design choices. What really took me a minute to get used to was the choice of the silver or the chrome dragon charm in it. I won't say it looks bad, it just took me a minute to get used to. And it does go with the weapon overall, the black and white design overall, it, it fits it pretty well. So overall the handle, it took me a minute to get used to, but it does begin to grow on you quite a bit. Next we move on to the Fuchi and the Suba, or the Sleeve and the Guard. And overall I'd have to give it, kind of similar to the to the pommel, not bad. Again, it's got the similar charm pattern to the as a dragon and all that. Again, probably a aluminum electroplated with a silver whitish paint. And um, the only complaint I have is that they have some lips on it that seem to, when I was testing, as you move up and down the handle, it seems to kind of bite into your hand a little bit. It's not like it's really digging in there. It's just kind of an awkward bump as you're kind of moving up and down the handle upon striking something. Not really that big of a deal, just more of a, a bit of a complaint, I'd say. Also, you can see a bit of separation where the guard and the ray skin don't quite meet up. But, um, again, not really that noticeable. Just something I think if they took that wrap all the way around, it would have kind of prevented. But um, the one that really stood out to me, and the part that I really fell in love with, would have to be the guard itself. Honestly, like the other parts of it, again, it's a repeating f fact, but it took me a minute to grow on me. But um, I began to fall in love with that white silverish paint on it. 
and actually begin to really like it. Not like the other guards and everything else, it's got a cool dragon pattern on it. And this one, like the other ones, are actually pretty st sturdy and pretty solid. I was beginning to get nervous because when you first open it up, you get like, what is this made out of? Is this solid? But um, it held up well, and it, again, like the other guards, didn't seem to bend or anything, and did do a pretty good job. But um, looks overall not bad, and uh, like I said, it may take a minute to grow on you, but you begin to fall in love with it. Next we come to the Sebeka, or the Habaki, and um, obviously the spacers are what they've used before, the standard ruffle pattern flat plate uh, spacers, but where these stands out would have to be the Feral or the Habaki, and um, I actually really like it. It's got a kanji or a Chinese figure on it. I Don't quote me because I have no idea, I'm not a linguistics expert, but my bet would be it has to something to do with the name of the sword itself. If you know what it actually says, write it in chat, I'd love to know. But um, I actually kind of liked it. No other patterns are with it, just that cool little uh, Chinese character on it or a Japanese kanji letter. And now uh, looks pretty nice. And then we come to the Seiya and the Scabbard, and um, probably where it got its name. Uh, the dragon pattern on it's actually really cool. It's a black, probably a uh, painted uh, Seiya, and um, while the dragon pattern is really cool on it, it is kind of just like a vinyl sticker attached to it. Not to distract the fact that it is really cool looking, and lots of them still use this, but it does, it does. Mm, subtract a little bit from that it's not actually set into the paint and actually or painted on or anything um but overall it doesn't look bad um yeah it's actually pretty good looking can't really say too much about it um the wrap they use on is a lot thicker than some of the ones that i've seen normally when i get katanas like this or any ones i buy they usually have a thinner almost similar to the handle wrap they use but they used a lot thicker material here and it does actually help it stand out quite a bit. It actually looks like one of the old-fashioned katanas, the name of which slips my mind at the moment. But um, they used a lot thicker style like this, where they actually has more of a raised and thicker pattern on it. So overall, even that part looked pretty good. Finally, we come to the important bit, the blade or the katana. And it looks overall are actually pretty good. I always love blood grooves, and especially a double blood groove is really dang cool looking. I, again, I miss the fact it doesn't have a Hammond line. That would really, really help this thing stand out. But I do like the double blood groove, and it does seem to be pretty straight going down the blade. I know sometimes people complain that they've been a little off, but um, the double offset blood groove does look good in this one, as well as the style choice they use for the polish look pretty good. Again, miss the Hammond line, but honestly, not that big of a deal, considering the blade overall seems to look pretty good overall with the double blood groove. So, let's move on to testing, shall we? So as I can see here, the uh, first water bottle chop went pretty good overall. I don't expect too much to happen in these, it's just more to get a gauge of how the blade feels and how it feels when making contact. Next we move on to the uh, the Tommy mat, and the uh, first cut was really good. Again, extra sharp definitely fits this thing. It got a lot deeper than any of the previous swords I tested so far, including some of my own. And the fact is, is that... Um, yeah, it went well the first chop. The second chop, though, that's where things went a bit awry. As you can see here, um, there was a bit of bending going on with the blade, and unfortunately that seemed to remain for the rest of the testing. The blade appeared to have warped a bit. I'm not sure if it's either in the handle or where the tank first meets the, the blade overall, but it appears to bend right where the guard is because there's a little bit of a bend that seems to have loosened up the spacers, and I'm not sure if the spacers or if the bend kind of happened right where the guard is because the guard is now just a little bit loose, and overall I was a little bit nervous to continue testing because I wasn't sure how it would hold up. The fact is, though, after giving a couple swings, feeling it around, while it did make a lot of, little bit of clanking noise and it did make me a bit nervous, the blade did seem to overall structurally be pretty sound. The bend wasn't really, it was bad, but it wasn't really that big a deal. It just more loosened up the spacers every little while. And the guard, the handle and all that still seemed to be attached firmly, so I decided to proceed on with the third swing. Third swing went pretty deep as well and uh, didn't seem to do any further damage to the weapon. So overall, it held up pretty well in that aspect. Then I moved on to a bit of a speed chop involving a cardboard tube that I found from an old carpeting patch. So the fact is, this thing overall, the first cut was a little awkward, but after that, I kind of got the hang of the blade, and overall it seemed to cut through pretty well. I made multiple cuts without slowing down. The last stop was a little sloppy, but again, handling a blade that's a little bit warped like that is always a bit of a challenge. Finally, we moved on to the bit that got me really nervous. 
the ice chop. Now, I wasn't sure if I was even going to proceed with the ice chop, considering what happened involving the uh, situation with the tummy man, but I kind of decided, well, if it doesn't hold up to this, what's the point? So the first chop, unfortunately, I apologize, people, my camera may have run out of space right as I was doing it, but this is the result overall, and it seemed to hold up pretty well. No damage to the blade overall, and pretty good. But since I missed the first chop, I decided to do a second one for y'all, and uh, like the first, it held up really well. So overall, chopping in that, it didn't do any further damage to the weapon as I was kind of expecting it to. So while it bent oddly enough in the tatami mat chop, which going back to that as you can see here, maybe not my best chop. It would probably was the deepest chop, but maybe me, my turning of the handle or how I used the blade overall might have resulted in this bit of a failure. So, um... Maybe my fault, maybe the blades, we're not too sure. We'll put it as a 50-50. So, with the sword taking a little bit of a bend and finishing up the ice chop, I decided to give it another go, except to see if I can maybe take that bend out of the blade. As you can see here, I was able to bend it a uh, considerable distance the other way, which, after a little bit of finagling, I was able to remove the bend from the blade and continue testing on a new tatami mat. Now, overall, as you can see here, I'm not the most proficient sword cutter in the world. Um, my Tishigiri skills need a lot of work, but that being said, at my skill level, it did a considerable amount of damage. This is a very sharp blade and very proficient. And, obviously, as you can see, I was able to effectively remove the bend from the blade without too much trouble. So overall, looking how the blade held up, going up and down the blade, while the blade did incur its unfortunate bend and the loosening of the guard. The fact is is that there are no other real blemishes or damage going down the entire blade. I expected with the ice chop and whatever happened with that the time you had to have resulted in some kind of either folding in the blade overall, but um, overall nothing really seemed to happen to it. Other than the bend, it held up pretty dang well. There was no other scratches on the blade or anything else like that, and overall an excellent job. So finally, Let's just give this thing an overall score, shall we? Ranking it from 1 to 10 in the five following categories. Appearance, durability, quality, value, and finally, most importantly, usability. So let's start with the appearance, shall we? Now, I won't deny the fact that the color choice and all that make this blade have a bit of a, an acquired taste. It's not your traditional looking katana, but it does have some cool aspects to it and I do like the double blood groups as well making the blade look just a tad bit cooler but the color choice is a bit unique I won't deny that and the Seiya while looking really cool it does have a few it's kind of a, just a kind of a sticker on it so I can't say it's something spectacular but considering the price it does look pretty dang good as a wall hanger you wouldn't notice all the things I just complained about so overall I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 not quite perfect but all things considered pretty dang good Finally, we come to durability, and unfortunately, this is where it takes quite a bit of a knock. While the blade didn't suffer any catastrophic failures, there was no major damage to the blade itself, and the overall handle and everything held up, so I can't knock it too much, but I cannot deny the fact that the blade did bend under circumstances that it otherwise shouldn't have. So unfortunately, as far as durability goes, I'm going to have to give this thing a 5 out of 10. A bit of a hard knock, but I cannot deny the fact that it did take a bend, all things considered, it may have been user error, may have been blade error, but considering the fact that not everybody's a professional, I can't give it a, anything above a 5, unfortunately. Next we come to quality. Now, the materials on that are very similar to the previous blade I tested, but the fact is, is that, again, while quality seemed to be overall not bad, the fact is uh, the bend in the blade is going to take a little bit of a notch off of quality as well, but the fact is this materials used overall seem to be of decent quality, they're not the best stuff, but the price considered overall makes it not bad. So I'm going to have to give the quality overall a 7, an extra knockdown just because of that bend in the blade affecting not just durability but the overall quality as well. Next we come to value. And uh, overall price is not bad, all things considered. It's still on the cheaper end of weapons, considering what you can buy. There are a few cheaper options that you can get that are a little bit more basic. There are a few more expensive options that may look a little bit fancier and a little better quality overall. But the fact is, the value is still there. And while it did take damage, it cannot deny the fact that it is still on the cheaper end of the weapon side, even at $189. So value, I'm going to have to give it a 7. A bit more expensive than the previous weapons I've tested. But overall, it's still a decent value. 
Next, we come to usability. The balance, weight, and all that overall were actually really good on the blade. Double blood grooves did give it a nice swishy sound upon using it as well, and it felt good in the hands and was relatively easy to use. That is until, again, the dreaded bend came into play. Unfortunately, that added a lot of aspects that made the blade difficult to use, and while I can't really factor that into his usability too much, the fact is it was still there, so I can't really rank it anything above that. It was still extra sharp, I cannot deny that fact. Out of all the blades I've tested from them, at least the other two, it is definitely the one that made the biggest impact on the tatami mat, and the biggest impact overall, as far as how easy it was to cut through things. So overall usability, I'm going to have to give it an 8 out of 10. Not the laser sharp blade that can cut through everything in the world, but the fact is it's still a really good weapon. So what does this give it overall for a score? A 35 out of 50, or overall a 7 out of 10. Unfortunately, again, I'm beating a dead horse here, but the fact is, is that it did incur that dreaded bend. And the fact is, is that it did affect performance and the overall usability, and it did really hurt the durability and quality category quite a bit. Hence why, unfortunately, I had to give it a 7 out of 10. So overall, what do we have to say about the blade? Is it a horrible blade because it took the bend? No, it didn't suffer catastrophic failure, and while it did make me a bit nervous upon using it further in testing, I began to build back a little bit of confidence, especially with that first ice chop that I did. And it didn't incur any other real damage other than that one slight bend in the blade. Was it catastrophic? No. Did it affect performance? Yeah, I can't deny that effect. Also, the fact is, it does look really good. So overall, would I recommend this blade? Yeah, yes and no. I cannot deny the fact it's a decent wall hanger. If you're looking for something to put on your wall that's a bit more unique than just a standard katana you can get anywhere else, yeah, I'd strongly recommend it in that case. It is a really, really good looking blade overall. But the extra sharpness does mean that if perhaps if you use it right, maybe you won't incur the unfortunate damages I did. But the fact is, is that durability is called into question just a little bit with the unfortunate damage it took in testing but overall perhaps if you use it right you may not incur these similar issues so overall 7 out of 10 i'd still kind of recommend the blade there are still good brand maker overall i will not knock romance men it couldn't have been an off blade i got but the fact is that in testing while i did abuse it a bit it did still hold up in the end so that concludes the review of the Black Dragon Katana. Still questioning how they got that name. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. To Again, thank you all for watching my video. Have a great day and a wonderful night. Goodbye.